The Fantasy Six Pack Hour. With your hosts, Joe Bob. Ah, uh, you're awful. <laughs> and AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shu Sin Shu Chu. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, Spiky Haired for the second week in a row, Mr. AJ Evelgarth. What is up, man? Uh, I don't even know where to start. It's been a long week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I heard you taking Christmas photos with the family, and that's... Uh, no, no good, we were good not. Luck. No, you gave you guys I, just gave up. I don't. I hate Christmas as it is, so I, this is like the worst possible wow, time. We just lost everybody. I don't. <laughs> fine, <laughs> whatever. Bah humbug. We I, I am, like dude. I'm such a Grinch. I don't. That. I don't um, care. I just don't. <laughs> I don't want to deal with it. It's stressful. It's annoying. I hate putting up Christmas tree and like. What letting it sit there for two months after Christmas and then finally taking it down. It's no point. <laughs> anyway, I'm good. Good times. <laughs> um, all right. Well, we're just going to move on from that. Um, yeah, no kidding, Jeff. A beautiful start indeed. Um, I love Christmas, by the way, guys. So I'm a happy person, I think. Uh, you know, I try to be. So Merry Christmas, whatever. Happy holidays, everybody. Uh, before we move on, if you're still with us, subscribe and follow us on YouTube, Periscope, wherever you listen to us, iTunes, Spotify, you name it. Um, By week teams this week, Bucks and Panthers. We had a, a skip in bye weeks, and now we've got two teams that have the latest bye week ever in football history. Uh think a few other teams have had this week but it, it stinks if anybody's in scott fishbowl and you own players on those teams you, you're going oh crap because <laughs> playoffs are starting in these big like tournament leagues i think uh what's the other one uh Raz Bowl starts yep. well it started like last Raz week Bowl's actually. Already started yeah and then there's another the, the the one that um jeff you're you guy yeah drafting with guys uh dwg they they start this week too. So those big like industry tournaments where you know fans are invited to, uh, they're they're uh, they're struggling. If if you've got those guys, so good luck to you. Let's bring on our guest though, uh, Jacob Dunn. Uh, he's a baseball writer for Fantasy Six Pack, but he's a football writer over at New Life Fantasy, and I believe he does like podcasts elsewhere. Um, he, he's uh, he's been at the top of the rankings a few times on Fantasy Pros overall. He's been number one for the week at least w- at least once, I believe, maybe twice. Yep, he's doing the two fingers twice. <laughs> uh, so uh, definitely, definitely a good company tonight, fellas, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Jacob Dunn, how you doing, man? Oh, I'm doing well, man. All the Christmas talk got me a little bit down, but you know, I'm repping <laughs> hey, the Christmas. What are you doing? I'm repping the Christmas sweater here, so you know I hope I can spread some Christmas joy to uh, my man AJ here. But uh, you know what? I'm excited to be here, though. It should be a fun show. <laughs> it's it will be it will be. Don't mind me. I'm just uh, I've been awake since like four fifteen this morning, so I'm dragging ass a little bit there too. But drink a beer, enjoy yourself, man. I, I will. Of, I will. Speaking of that, let's do our uh, our beer of the week. Mm, beer. All right, man. Uh, Jacob, you are the the guest of honor, so we're gonna let you uh, go first. What are you drinking with us tonight? All right. So tonight I have a uh, a winter go to, a KBS. Nice. Um, it stands for Kentucky Bourbon Stout from Founders Brewing Company in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Uh, to me, it's the perfect winter drink. That has incredible notes of chocolate, coffee, and bourbon. It's definitely a winter beer for sure. Awesome, nice. Sounds good. I saw uh, yeah. I saw a couple of the KBS stuff uh, the other day when I was shopping. So, have you had it? Uh, I have not had that one yet. No, I will have to uh, dip try into it, that though. Yeah, absolutely. So I myself am going with an other half uh, and. Eighth State Brewing High Density Hop Charge, uh, an Imperial IPA, 10%er. So that should cheer me up. 
Absolutely. <laughs> Hopefully. All right, so I put a little poll out for the show, and uh, the per- first person to respond, uh, Brian Drake over at uh, Fighting Chance, we got some friends over there, told me he liked the can from Antietam Brewery. It's the Intergalactic Hazy IPA. Uh, the, hand, the, the, the can is kind of cool looking, I, I'm not going to lie, mm-hmm. uh, but it's, it's not the, my favorite IPA I've had. You know, it's, it's kind of in that kind of average standard IPA range. You know, I give it a three and a half on untap. That's pretty much my, I like IPAs, so you're getting a three and a half. <laughs> if you're better, <laughs> I'm giving you more. Solid. Uh, so it's, it's good. It's drinkable. Uh, but I've, I've, got a, I've got a second one here. I have a feeling I'm just going to go through this one to get rid of it. So, uh, <laughs> but anyway, cheers, guys. Uh, let's have a good show. Cheers. All right, All right guys. So. Advice column is going to be delayed one section this week. We're just going to jump into some news and notes. And and obviously, the Will Fuller suspension news kind of led the way this week. Um, Jacob, we got to get your take on this first, man. Like, What do you think is the impact on the rest of this team? And, and obviously, you've got to start there with the quarterback. I mean, how does the loss of Fuller hurt Watson's, you know, I mean, he's not been awesome this year, but he's still been reliable enough for fantasy. Yeah, yeah. You took the words right out of my mouth. This is a crushing blow, actually, to the whole Texans offense, who was just hitting their stride after winning two games in a row. You know, with Will Fuller gone, to me, it plummets Watson's value. Now, he still has enough talent to produce weekly quarterback one numbers, but there's no way his recent high level of production continues with Brandon Cooks as his number one, because I just don't see Cooks as a number one. I think he thrived with Fuller getting the best cornerback and he just having their second to third best cornerback. So I think it definitely crushes the whole outlook of the Texans offense moving forward. And, and not to mention, they've lost Cobb for a few more games. So that's right. that's not helping any anything. So they're going with Cooks, Cooty, and no, I, whatever. Isaiah Coulter? Or something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, who cares? <laughs> um, right. I mean, AJ, like, so, you know, obviously it hurts the entire offense. I don't think anybody's going to disagree with that. So Watson takes a little bit of a nosedive. I still think he's usable personally in fantasy mm-hmm. because maybe now he rushes a little more. Um, you know, he's not going to have, you know, uh, uh, you know, one open guy every play. Um, yeah. But is there any receiver? Obviously, Cooks, I think, takes a little bit of an upgrade. I'm not sure enough that I'm just going to plug him in every single week, uh, depending on my options, because you probably didn't draft Cooks to be a starter. So maybe you've got some better options over him. Uh, but what about the secondary guys, you know, and maybe particularly like the tight ends like Ak- Akins and stuff like that? <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, I think the tight ends could get a little bit of a bump. Um, I know that they got uh, Waring back, so he could finally start seeing some time, um, and this just opens everything up more for him. Uh, you know, they, they still are without David Johnson, too. Um, so the running game already is, you know, kind of at a loss. Uh, Duke Johnson is Duke Johnson. So I think he's just going to do Duke Johnson things, which is minimal <laughs> and not really helping your fantasy team. Um, I mean, oh, he, David he Johnson had a nice should be returning this week. So that's a bit of a help at least Johnson. I'm sorry. He should returning. be returning this week. Oh, he well, looks good. They said concussion least. Oh, list good. So well, that's a little scratch, bit of a help, I guess, but scratch no that. Like say it about him anyway. <laughs> yeah. But <laughs> right. I mean, even still, I mean, we know what, David Johnson is too and what we've seen the past couple of years is not the David Johnson that everybody fell in love with so I think maybe uh, if he is finally fully healthy then that that will help a little bit of a boost but I mean still the running game in general is not really strong for Houston so oh, I'm right. just trying to stay away for the most part unless I have to use somebody yeah I, I like I was kind of trying to allude to there you know I think I think one of the bigger boosts is, is the tight end core there. Um, I think, you know, Aikens is, is somebody who you can stream now even more so than before. And especially, you know, with the tight end position toward the back end, it, it's pretty rough. You know, after you get past the top, you know, maybe five or six who you're just kind of plugging in at this point, especially this week with Gronk out. 
um, you know, he's a guy who is probably out there on waiver wires in a lot of places, and you can just go snatch him up. So I think you can look there. You know, the other receivers, I don't know. None of them really excite me. You, you know they're going to get a random score, but that might be it. So, it's like, good luck figuring it out. You know, they're, they're more DFS right. plays than anything because they're going to be cheap salary. Mm-hmm. So, that's all you're looking at there. Um, so, our advice column this week, when playoffs are approaching, and we sort of talked about this earlier in the year, but it, but it's, it was more of how to set your team up as the playoffs approach. But now that the playoffs are pretty much here and are here for certain leagues, it's, it's how are we setting our lineups for the most success now? And in my opinion, you know, and and I kind of said it weeks ago when I said this, and it's, it's time to start cutting bait with those guys that we were really hoping for big things from, you know, our kind of stash players, um, you know, maybe guys who are, you know, bigger names and you're just kind of hoping they'll break out of a funk and, but it just doesn't appear to be happening. I mean, come on, we've had 12 weeks of football, 11 weeks for every team, except for the bucks and the Panthers who have had 12. We know who's playing football this year. We know who's not, I would think, right. Um, we'll get proven wrong time in, you know, every now and then as the season ends, you know, we'll have some big weeks from these big time players who in the past have performed, but so far haven't this year, but for the most part, like, come on, you're not starting them anyway. And so, you know, I think what you want to do is you want to go out to the waiver wire, the free agent list and go pick up some of these players who are getting nine, 10, 12 point chunks for the last few weeks and are just kind of sitting out there because they're lesser known names. They're guys that came off an injury. There's, you know, your league is sort of falling asleep. It, they're all out there and we've got a slew of guys that we've listed down that we'll get to later. Uh, But I mean, that's kind of how I do it. Um, Now there's a few handcuffs that you still stash. um, And those are also in our list, but um, just because like, Look, for the fact that, you know, the fact of it is that, like, you really are just playing optimal lineup at this point. You're not playing, oh, my best players, right? Like, you're playing optimal lineup. You're almost playing DFS style in the playoffs. Now, it's slightly different because you're not playing with everybody available at a certain price. You have to be under a salary. You're playing with your team plus everybody available on the waiver wire. You need to go play the optimal lineup. You got to, you know, you got teams playing the Jets. You need to rethink, you know, starting your wide receiver three against the Steelers and going, oh, this guy who's a flex receiver is playing the Jets. Well, maybe I'll throw him in instead, but he's better. So I'm going to play my guy. No, 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 no. That's that's not how you win in the playoffs. Like weird things happen in the playoffs. AJ can attest to it. I beat him with Mike Isecki last year. <laughs> he did nothing all year <laughs> long until, until week 16. Yeah. He's giving me the middle finger and I deserve it. <laughs> I mean, uh, so yeah, it's, you know, and how many people, you know, Rode Winston to a championship, even though he played poorly in week oh, oh, sixteen. Wait. No, yeah, oh me, uh, he played poorly <laughs> in week sixteen, but he got me there. You know, and that's the thing. So you play, you know, you play a little DFS style in the playoffs. You get players that are producing now, and you get rid of your players who aren't producing. You know, so I I don't know, Jacob. Do you agree, disagree with any of this? Got anything I else to agree. add? I agree with you 100% because I have the same mindset when it comes to fantasy baseball too. Like it's like if your guy's injured, it's the playoffs. You 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 cut bait. Like there's one year where I had to cut Mike Trout. I had to cut Josh Bell because they were injured. It's like you have to win now. Mm-hmm. 100%. You can't keep stashing these guys for the playoffs. You're in the playoffs now. Let's win. So I agree with you 100%. Joe. Yeah. AJ, what, what you got? Anything? No, I mean, I, I'm pretty much on board with that, too. Um, you know, you've got to go with what you want to do. And pretty much if you're playing fantasy sports, you want to win. If you don't, then I don't know what you're doing in here. But um, <laughs> cool, stay, join my leagues. Uh, uh, I'm into it. But <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm good with all of it. I mean, it's you just got to get 
got to get the guys that are going to help you and you know don't be afraid to take the better matchup if your studs aren't necessarily in great matchups but don't don't be stupid about it too. Don't bench right. all of your studs because yeah, they're like, I'm never all benching DeAndre Hopkins like that type of level yeah, stud right. or Adams. I'm never benching that type of level stud. I, I think AJ, you you probably mean more like the like your second the second to third guys, tier type so, yeah. good players not, who not your to... your top top guys, but yeah. I mean, I've been the known elite to do it. Players, no way. Works. Most no of the time. It Right. Um, Most of the time it doesn't. So yeah, we do have a question though. Bobby, uh, Bobby on YouTube asks, I have Jefferson and Thielen. Do you think I should keep both or trade one? Uh, no, I'm keeping both. They're both like top 10 receivers, like every given week at this point. Um, (laughs) somebody interrupt me if I'm wrong. Swift for (laughs) Connor. I'm assuming that's a trade question. I want Swift at this point. Yeah. I want Swift too. A hundred percent. Yeah. I'm 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 off Connor. So wait, Jeff Jeff says something. In the... Yeah, was it? That? Well, he. What? Yeah, I did read a report though. I will say this: I did read a report that AP came out saying that Swift doesn't look like himself. I heard that. Um, so that's bad news. But like, I don't I don't want Connor. <laughs> like, yeah. Connor has done anything have, in weeks. Swift has a much higher ceiling, and Connor, yeah, he's just been average the whole season, really. He's had like one one good game, maybe a few he mediocre was games. Solid but Swift, the first few weeks, right? And then it just went downhill from there. And like, yeah. you, this is the passing offense at this point. They've got three phenomenal receivers, and as much as my co-host on the uh, the last call Sunday, Dave Eddie hates it, but Ebron's. Okay is a fourth option, and James Washington is right there with 4A, 4B. So, like, it's okay. Right. Yeah. Uh, and then he's not at catch has been awful. I know day. it's not his fault, but should I trade him? I mean, no. <laughs> As we just kind of said. I mean, it depends on what you're going to get, man. But, like, Hopkins is Hopkins is a stud. I, I think Murray's going to figure it out. In fact, he's already, Murray's already come off the injury list, so that gives me a little more hope for this week. Um, then in weeks past when he was, you know, banged up. So I'm keeping Hopkins where I possibly can, unless you're just given the world for him. Anyway, let's jump into our, our main and really only topic this week. And it's, we're going to run through a whole slew of players here that are, you know, players to add during your playoff run and players to drop. We'll start with some guys to add. And what we did is we went through the Yahoo ownership percentages and, Anybody less than fifty percent, uh, Jacob? I, I you know I, I asked you to come prepared with with a few guys. I don't know if you want to go through a couple of them. We might have them listed here already. I'm sure we do because some of them were pretty obvious. I felt like, uh, yeah. But if you want to start, man, go ahead and throw a couple out there. We'll see what's going yeah. on. Yeah, yeah. So um, I really like I really like Kirk Cousins for the playoff run. Um, yep. You know, that he does good. have a tough matchup. <laughs> what, what was that? That was one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so he does have a tough matchup in the first week of the playoffs, traveling to Tampa Bay. But then he has tremendous matchups in uh, New Orleans and Detroit. You, you know, in your championship game. So I, I would either stash him and play him on those weeks in fifteen and sixteen, um, and or I wouldn't mind starting him in week fourteen against. The Bucks, because at least you know he's going to be in a negative game script, and that could give you a solid floor. And when it comes to and when it comes to the playoffs, I want to eliminate all risk. And Kirk Cousins is one of the safest quarterbacks that you can start moving forward. Um, and there is there is a tight end that I would give a long look to, and that is Logan Thomas. I mentioned Logan Thomas as a streaming option this week, despite. Fa- five and a half targets per game mm-hmm. for the whole season and has at least four targets in every single game this year. And that type of volume at the tight end position is extremely rare this year. Like you were saying, mm-hmm. Joe, if, if you don't have, have those top five tight ends and especially with Gronk out, you need those potential targets and all those targets make him a viable option in all leagues. He's scored in 
two straight at least, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He mm-hmm. uh, he found the end zone on Thanksgiving Day. He yeah. was he caught all four targets for twenty yards. Pass for like thirty yards too. So <laughs> he's a yeah, hey, he's he a BC quarterback. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Go Hokies. <laughs> oh yeah. That's uh, right, baby. <laughs> yeah, man. All all those are all those are good. I don't know if you got any more to add there or if that's all you brought. That's fine. We yeah, got a lot. Yeah, yeah. Those are all I got. <laughs> uh, so we uh, we 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 wrote some guys down and kind of just went through. Just I don't know what order it was on the site or not, but it's just kind of the order that it popped up in. And so you know, Brian Hill and Ito Smith are, are guys that that I wouldn't mind stashing at this point. Um, Gurley's still dealing with the knee injury. Um, we'll get to this. You know, we'll mention this in the injury list, but. He went from limited on Wednesday to did not practice today. So that's never a good sign when you go backwards. Hmm. Um, so who knows how long Gurley's going to be missing time if he does miss time. But yeah, Brian Hill wasn't awesome last week. Um, but I mean, anytime you can pick out a pick a guy who's going to get a, a ton of reps, you know, running backs has been pretty poor this year. I, I'll I'll take it. Right. Um, AJ, feel free to jump in anytime and just cut me off and start yeah, tossing. So here. while we're here, um, I would just like to uh, uh, write on my chalkboard in blind ink right now that Brian <laughs> Hill can uh, S a D. Uh, <laughs> I, I held this guy <laughs> all GD season ah. knowing that Gurley would be injured at some point. And son of a bitch stayed healthy until now, and I cut ties with Hill. And it's well, at least Brian Hill got you like six points last week, so you didn't right. miss anything. I don't even um, know if I had him last week. I, I mean, I'm sure I did in the one league because running backs were so scarce as it was, so I didn't end up cutting him there. But I, I held him in fishbowl forever, mm-hmm. and it was just like, come on, dude, you're killing. Mm-hmm. Finally, give him up, and then he has a decent game. I'm like, all right, this is this is about right. And I'm not in the Scott Fishbowl playoffs, so we don't need to go there. I know. Ito Smith kind of um, stole the show. So, like, I'm wondering, is mm-hmm. Ito Smith a better ad for his ceiling? Yeah. I, I, I mean, I think they're both pretty similar ceilings. Uh, I mean, I think it's going to go week to week. You know, it's going to turn into a hot hand sort of deal there, in my opinion. Um and Matt Ryan hasn't looked great, so no. eh, I, I don't know. I mean, he, he's yeah. he's had consistency issues this year, and and part of that is you know Julio in and out of the out of the lineup. So I think that's got a lot to do with it. But God, so who you got? Warning. If you do, if you do, if you do start Hill or Edo Smith, the Saints have one of the best rush defenses in the league so they might not do anything anyway yeah so yeah just I'm, a warning I'm, I'm worried about this entire falcons offense same um this mm-hmm. week and for a few weeks to be perfectly honest with you but still starting running back reps are starting volume running back key. reps volume is key at this position people have right. been decimated by this position so these are two guys i think have to be on people's rosters uh, the next guy here is Alan Lazard, and I was really shocked to see his ownership under 50. Uh, I'm like, he came back last week, and I believe he scored, caught six for 40 or something like that. Like, he had a good week. Um, he got banged up again, but I think he's going to be okay. He's coming back in this week, it sounds like. Uh, I don't see any reason why he should be owned at 50%. Like, he's he was crushing it the first few weeks until he got, until he got hurt. So. Right. Yeah, Alizar is a no-brainer to me. I don't. I that don't one I don't it. understand. I mean, I just, I, I held him because I knew he was going to be good when he got back. And that it's the must same. Be there. There's a bunch of leagues that didn't add IR spots. Um, yeah, it was a pretty deep league. Plus, I had, I have him and Devontae on that same team, and I was like, okay, well, this is great, you know, whatever. But Devontae came back, and Lazard went out, and I'm like, oh. All right, well, now they're both back, so I'm playing both of them. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, it, like I said, Laz- Lazard has got the confidence of, of Aaron Rodgers, and, and Rodgers oh, yeah. obviously is having an epic season yeah. compared, to, yeah, compared to the last couple for him. So uh, Nelson Aguilar is another one that's kind of a sneaky, like, play, you know, pick up here. And, and maybe it's just because 
people know who Nelson Aguilar really is, Mr. Alligator Arms. But <laughs> I mean, let's be real. This guy's been pretty good mm-hmm. for the Raiders this year. Um, he had a he had a stretch a few weeks ago that was you know he scored a touchdown like four straight games something like that, and then you know I had a couple down games, but obviously Ruggs really isn't involved in this offense enough to really matter. Uh, Brian Edwards isn't involved enough. Aguilar's really the only receiver other than Renfro and then Waller that's involved. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Jacobs is banged up, so Aguilar's the guy here, and he's kind of their deep threat. Um, and and Carr, shockingly, is actually throwing it deep this year. <laughs> so uh, Aguilar's been kind of sneaky good. I had Cousins here. He was my next guy, but you you, you talked about him, so that, that's <laughs> good. Um, Salvan Ahmed... Ahmed, I guess is is how you pronounce it, and then Miles Gaskin, both owned under fifty percent, which was really shocks me. I mean, like, mm-hmm. br- like Brita came back and he's nothing. We don't care about him. Garbage. These are the two guys you want, and so if, if you if you want to, you know, if you're decimated at running back, or it doesn't even matter if you're decimated at running back, like mm-hmm. you probably should just pick these guys up if they're out there. I'm sure you've got worse on your bench, you know. One of them could potentially just break out and be the guy. You know, we don't know if Gaskins is really fully healthy. Ah- Ahmed is, 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 you know, coming back from injury himself. But, I mean, at worst, they split 50-50, in my opinion. And I don't know how, how bad that would be in that offense. Um, it's not like a top-notch offense, but with Fitzpatrick back there potentially for, a, you know, a week or two longer, it 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 moves a lot better in my opinion with, with him back there, at least for fantasy purposes than it does with Tua. So um, next up, and this is the one, the biggest handcuff I had that I just don't understand how he's not owned more cook owners. You have to be making the playoffs everywhere. I own cook. I'm in the playoffs. There's a reason why Dalvin cook. How do you not own Alexander Madison? Gotcha. <laughs> Right. Like what in the hell? Yeah, especially um, now. Mm-hmm. Like now is the time to do it. Yeah. Um and so <laughs> like look, even if you don't own Cook, go get him. Cook's already dealing with another injury. Right. Right. I was just gonna say that last game he went out and he was out for like a few plays, but it looked bad. He was on the ground for like five Hopeland. to ten minutes. So I mean he's I supposed to play again, but I mean like dude. Stab of a finger, he could be out again, man. Like that's right. that's the way Cook plays. He's he runs hard, um, and he's gonna get banged up. So, Alexander Madison, I don't like. You really don't even need to be a Cook owner. You need to go get him. I mean, AJ, you agree with that? Absolutely. I mean this this is the point in every season as a Cook owner, unless it's week three when he gets you know injured for the season that you should be going to get Madison. I mean, he is the go-to handcuff right now. Um, you know, and it used to be a, a Ryquel Armstead for Fournette. And now he's been on COVID the entire year and Fournette's not even there. So, you know, this is, this is the guy. He's the one that you want to get, you know, short of Latavius Murray, I would say, you know, Cook and Madison always, always, always should go hand in hand in week 10. If he's out there, you just get him and sit because who knows? Yeah, I, I've literally had to cut some guys who are actually producing right now. Um, granted, they're, they would be on my bench regardless um, to stash Madison in a few leagues. And I'm not even the cook owner in a few of those. So <laughs> I just... I'm I'm keeping Madison because if Cook goes down, you've got a, you've got an automatic RB one, if not high end RB two at worst. So it's he's he's right there. Mm-hmm. Kind of a weird one because we were kind of writing him off a few weeks ago, and Cam Akers coming back into the fold here. You know he's seen a significant work increase the last few weeks, um, and last week he got what almost all, if not all, the red zone work, scored a touchdown. Mm-hmm. You know, hopefully, like, I, I like this guy coming into the season. I really didn't believe too much in Daryl Henderson. I didn't believe in Malcolm Brown. They pretty much proved me wrong, and I was kind of owning it. But maybe maybe now's the time where I can be like, ha told you. Uh, he's going to win people <laughs> some championships, possibly. Like, he's got a, he's got a, a couple rough weeks, but he's got a really good 
um, week 15 to 16 matchup against the Jets and the Seahawks. And their defenses are just, they can get run over. So right. um, it's still going to be kind of iffy. I, I, I still just think McVay is going to, you know, play the hot hand, kind of do whatever. But who knows at this point, like that's what you're kind of trying to do. Like you're tossing your dead weight out the window, right? And you're picking mm-hmm. up guys who have been producing more of late and hopefully their arrow is pointing up. Right. Mm-hmm. And Cam Akers is like that perfect example. Like buy it now, take the chance now and see what happens before everybody else goes. Oh, okay. Cause last week he went 84 yards and a touchdown. People still are buying it. He's still out there. Mm-hmm. So go get him now. Be that guy that goes and tosses the last person on your bench and takes that chance and you could have a top 10 running back in week 16 when you know you desperately need it so um jacob you're shaking your head i don't know so so i've been hoping for weeks that sean mcveigh would just give the reins to cam Akers. it is so maddening you know hasn't he seen enough of daryl henderson you yeah. know the dude is a glorified plotter yeah you know? he just runs yeah. over tries to run through people right Doesn't work he, so Last game, I think he got 19 yards on 10 carries. Like, it is bad. you're still getting. I, I okay. So, all of Cam Akers though, his all of his yards came on that one 61 yard electrifying run. I mean, it was yeah. electrifying. I'm not taking anything away. And McVeigh let Akers finish the job and get yep. that touchdown. You know, because he deserved it. He got him there. And I think like Sean McVeigh is definitely like I'm going to reward you if you produce and if you block and that's one thing that acres has struggled in the past pro and that's one thing that's holding him back from starting acres and lion's share so until mcveigh fully trusts him i think this is still a running back by committee with yeah. malcolm brown just vulturing touchdowns but like you said joe he is a lottery stash and I've been stashing him for the past three weeks. I haven't started him because I can't trust it. But, I mean, if Daryl Henderson goes down, then Akers is carrying your team to a championship. I caught him in, like, week eight when he was, like, just – he was trash at that point. Like right. He was getting – he got he literally came back from injury and got zero carries two weeks in zero a row. And I was, like, and I was right. like, well, all right, this isn't happening, so cut bait. Right. And now it's like, oh, uh, man. Like, I'm usually super patient, and I just was like, nah, I'm done. Right. So <laughs> – <laughs> yeah, I I like the Acres upside here. Um, he wasn't a guy I was really interested in early season. I, I just figured that backfield was destined to fail because the O line sucks, and still True. pretty much does. Um, you know, if you got a guy who's supposed to be your number one going ten for nineteen, I mean that's partially <laughs> on him. But Seriously. that's got to also be on the on the line. You know, they're not they're not creating enough opportunity as it is. No, absolutely not. Um, mm. But yeah, I mean, he's out there. If he's making the plays, he's getting the playing time. You know, again, this is the time now to just go grab these guys. They're they're the spec ads, as as Richard Seville always calls mm. them. Mm. I mean, he was owned early in the season, fell flat. Everybody cut him. So now you can be the guy to go get him. Absolutely. Another one here who I'm still kind of surprised was out there, and it's Tim Patrick for the Broncos. <laughs> uh, I mean, before <laughs> week 12, when, you know, they had no quarterback. So it is nobody's fault there on that team. Right. Uh, right. Three straight double digit p- point games. Mm-hmm. And you know, he's just been, you know, a steady guy. And it's like, this is the perfect example of, like, you're going to get injuries in the playoffs season, right? Like you can't rely on even just all your like stud guys to make it through the playoffs. You're going to need to be able to plug in somebody who's reliable and could just not kill you. Mm-hmm. Tim Patrick's that perfect guy. Like he's just a, a safe floor guy. It mm-hmm. feels like mm-hmm. um, Judy hasn't really been Judy as we were hoping he would be KJ Hamler's there, but eh, whatever. Uh, Tim Patrick's like the best receiver on this team. Yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I see your Broncos jersey behind you. What, what you got to say there about this, Jacob? It's funny. Before the season, I thought that Tim Patrick was a cut candidate just because Sutton was there and Judy was there and Hamler's there. It's like we have our three guys. All we need is Deontay Spencer as a kick returner and we're fine. Um, but Tim Patrick has stepped up big time, like you said. And mm-hmm. 
a cool stat is that all season he hasn't received less than four targets in any game, you know, yeah. uh, except for last week. But I'm not really. Oh, yeah, that's not, that doesn't count. <laughs> It doesn't count. <laughs> last week's yeah, we'll, last week's a do over. <laughs> We're just gonna throw the Booker quarterback. No, what? <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah, that was a mess. Um, but you know he's <sighs> like you said, he's a safe floor guy. He's, he he is a wide receiver three, and at worst he'll get you, let's say five five catches for sixty yards at worst, and he has a ceiling right. of hundred to hundred and twenty yards for a touchdown. And he Eddie. he's a red zone target too. Yeah, he's six foot four. Yeah. Been scoring and he's Big been dude. being targeted in the red zone a lot. And that's what yeah. makes me really like him. Right. I picked him up weeks ago. I liked him two years ago when he kind of had a good good year. Yeah. And then fell off, fell out of favor last year. And then as you said, he was a cut target. He was a cut target for a lot of people. Right. Yeah. Uh, but he made the team. And yeah. then injuries happened. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. This yeah, yeah. one just steady. this one just blows my mind that he's still mm-hmm. out there. And again, I don't, don't think, think about last is. week. You know, um, people may have dropped him last week because they knew it no. was going to be such a shit show. And then they decided, all right, go get him if they did. I mean, or you should have when he was dropped last week. Right. Um, Patrick's been awesome. I mean, I really, really am glad I went out and grabbed him a few weeks back, too, mm-hmm. and just took advantage of it because he had a couple up and down early on, you know, and then. The injuries came in. He got the opportunity. So well, early on, he literally wasn't getting snaps. Nice. Like he was not playing at all. And then that the injuries down. happened. And he got all this playing time, and he's like, right. "Hey guys, I can play ball. Yeah, Just keep me around." So yeah, yeah I'm with you, man. Got about Hamilton. They're like, "All right, never mind. Go over there. <laughs> yeah, go go to the quarterbacks room. We need oh, you over sorry. there." Right, <laughs> right. And Patrick's facing the Chiefs this week, and Locke's coming back, so he's in a. Negative game script. If this is like a must win week for you, which it is for a lot of you out there, if you have a wide receiver three spot or you just want to take a chance at your wide receiver two spot, he could get enough targets to produce those wide receiver two numbers. He has that ceiling this week. I'm in a couple leagues where we start two flex. He is okay. a thousand percent in my yeah. lineup in yeah. all of those leagues. Smart. Yeah. Um, so, uh, Moving on here, a couple tight ends. We got Jordan Reed. Um, you know, with Kittle out, obviously San Fran likes to look at their tight ends a lot. Got some favorable matchups here. Buffalo, which you wouldn't have thought early on, but sort of has turned into a favorable matchup. Mm-hmm. Dallas. Um, you know, and then he's got his uh revenge game against Washington. Uh thanks, Jeff, for that one. Uh love it. Revenge game. <laughs> um, <Love the> narrative. <laughs> he will uh, probably I mean, blow his knee in that game, so oh do man. not start uh, him. In we will see, of revenge. No, we will see what happens. Revenge will revenge on revenge. Ooh, Kittle. Uh, yeah, Kittle is supposedly eligible to return Week 16. We'll see what happens. I mean, if the 49ers are totally dead in the water, I don't see why they would risk it. Uh, but Kittle's a monster. If he comes back, it's totally worth it. Um, yeah, I mean, tight end to tight end. And then, you know, I sort of mentioned it earlier, Jordan Akins, you know, opportunity is, is, is the name of the game there with him. I just got a little shock in my freaking ear from my earbuds, man. What the hell is that? <laughs> also, this why you need the over the ear <laughs> phones, bro. Maybe that was Let's weird. Step back into the seventies, get yourself some nice pioneers. Okay. Got some big ass headphones down there that I could use, but I'm not going to. Um, and then some, a couple of quarterbacks here. I know we mentioned Cousins earlier. Thanks, uh, thanks, Jacob, for that one. But Trubisky you. and uh, and mm-hmm. Jeff, this is uh, this is all you, man. Flexing oh, on this one, uh, Trubisky. I'm not saying that. I hate I hate saying that. It's just Miss Trubisky, man. I'll tell you though, the the playoff <laughs> matchups yeah, are phenomenal for mm-hmm. this team and. I will tell you, he's probably going to be my sleeper quarterback pick for the next four weeks if I can beat AJ to it. Because <laughs> he gets Detroit. So he's my sleeper this week. I'm already giving that one away. Houston, Minnesota, and Jacksonville. Yeah. I mean, guys, there, there's there's teams out there that are still trying to start Cam Newton. I guarantee it. <laughs> right. Like, there's teams that lost Drew Brees that are going, what do we do? You know, and if they didn't get Hill, like, 
you know, they're they're struggling to fight. You know, they're they're struggling to try to start Derek Carr. Which, come on, the if people, Derek Carr is playing Kansas City, we all know Derek Carr is not a good quarterback. <laughs> the people so, that own right. Drew Brees lost him, and then lost Taysom Hill to the guy that wanted to play him in his tight end spot. Just reeks of twenty twenty <laughs> fantasy football. Yeah, yeah. and I love it. Except yes, for the yeah. fact that I tried to go ahead and get Hinton last week. And that did, not, that did not work. That did not work. Lost. Uh, Good work on that one. Why did you do that? Because At least I don't care anymore. I, j- I just don't care anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I've given up. You I've already said I hate Christmas. I mean, what, 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 what else is there? <laughs> I mean, come on. I'm counting down the days until 2021 hits. And then hopefully I don't die here, 20 just, days just, into the new year on my 40th birthday. So this cheers. Is positive here. Hey All guys, right. you, you want to uh, talk about some drops? Let's talk about some drops. Yeah. Well, I got so I got one more real quick. Hang on. Uh, Philip Rivers is an ad, man. Actually, like you'd be surprised. Like I thought, you know, I looked at Philip Rivers. I saw his ownership really low, and I was like, ah, who cares? And then like I looked at his last four games, and I was like, yeah, huh, interesting. You uh, stole my sleeper pick, right? Like Philip Rivers has been yeah. solid of late, and it's funny Mine. because last week on the ESPN <laughs> Fantasy Show or the the ESPN Show, the NFL Live, they were talking about how like Rex Ryan and everybody they like, called him out early in the season, and he actually started like watching and listening and he was just like uh yeah screw this and then started playing really well really he got on air with like with uh one of the news reporters and uh was basically like yeah like i watched everything they said and was like uh wait a minute guys i can still play ball and they all came back on the air afterwards and they were like yeah we're sorry because he's sorry (laughs) backtrack Um, so yeah he's definitely streamer streamer range here and you know you're starting those back end quarterback ones like Phil Rivers is going to sneak into that range every now and then, you know, last couple of weeks here for sure. Um, but yeah, let's get to these drops. AJ, you want to you want to run with this one? Yeah, I do want to hit a couple of ads real quick, though, while we're still in this uh, category. Um, Philip Lindsay is one to me that jumps out a little bit. Um, <laughs> Did I, miss I, that? I mean, yeah, I know Melgo's still there and all that, but there's been games where Lindsay has been the better back. Um, and gotten the opportunities, and his, his schedule down the the line is uh, is very friendly. So I'm uh, I'm kind of looking at it for that reason alone. Yeah, so um, I mean, he's 52 percent owned. That's why I didn't pick him. But yeah, he's he's, 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 right, he's right there. I'm I'm cheating a little with him. You know, he's <laughs> right at that cusp there. Um, but I mean, you got Kansas City this week. Okay, all right. You got Carolina next week. Buffalo. Yeah, me- mediocre, but then he finishes out against the Chargers, and that's that's a nice matchup there. And if you are in a league that plays the Week 17, he's got a nice matchup again against Vegas. Um, didn't really do anything against them early, but that's fine. So the other guy I had was um, was Gus Edwards, and again he's right at this cusp here of 50% owned. And mostly, I'm I'm just throwing him in there because he's gotten some opportunities, um, especially with you know, COVID running rampant through the Baltimore streets and uh, M&T Bank Stadium and the running backs room. You don't know what's going to happen with them yet, um, but this is one of the games that got rotated around for next week uh, or well, this coming week for the Dallas game. Um, that's a nice matchup there. Then he's got Cleveland, tougher matchup, and it's in Cleveland. Jacksonville, really nice matchup. And then he finishes out at the Giants and Cincy. Yeah, mediocre. But I just worry that Dobbins kind of took that over. Right. Yeah, I I think Dobbins. So will uh, end I, up I'm getting more of it, but if I'm actually I picked up Edwards for this the, week. The Ryquel strain of COVID, then you know oh, he gone. It doesn't he sound gone. like it, man. They're, they're already cleared to play. Yeah. So it's, I know. Uh, it's joking. God, come on! Can't you have fun, you? Joe? It Can't you have like fun? It. Why are you so miserable, Joe? <laughs> Why? Why do you have to rain on everybody's Just parade? Like to prove you wrong. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> Go to the drops. You are Mister Negative, so you can have the drops. Uh, good. There you go. Good. <laughs> Speaking of uh, of drops, did you see the uh, lovely teardrops post that I posted to your uh, rankings? Shout out. No. Uh oh. <sighs> anyway. 
All right, 60% owned or less, uh, or I'm sorry, greater. Um, time to dump Kenny Galladay. I mean, if you don't have an IR spot, what are we doing with this guy? Tough. He's He's been the bane of my existence for multiple leagues this year. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and it's really killed Matthew Stafford this year, too. Yeah. Um, so, bye, Felicia. Uh, <laughs> DJ Shark. I mean, the volume's there, but he really hasn't performed this year outside of a couple of weeks. You know, now he's got freaking Glennon back there throwing to him. I mean, hey, at least it's not Trubisky, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it's weird with Shark, right? Like, he gets right. the volume. And, <laughs> and, <No>. and, and <laughs> Jeff and I kind of had this argument on Slack. <laughs> Before the show, when I wrote his name down, and it was look, the volume is there. I get it, but like if you look at his performances, even he's had two all season Nothing, within dude. the top twenty. Now both of those happen to be inside the top ten. After yeah. that, man, he's been down to the fifties, the forties, the sixties, the seventies. Like mm. it's been bad for him, and we're talking wide receiver finishes on the week. I don't know if the volume matters anymore. So, like, literally, if you if you really want to cut bait with him and there's somebody good out there, then then I say do it. Like, I just don't think Sharks even startable anymore until you know, un- unless uh, uh, Minshew comes back, which we right. have no idea if that's even happening. I, but does that even matter? I don't know. If he hasn't does. been good with Minshew in He's there. The only he'd be the. He so would be the, the only quarterback I would start him with. Let's put it that way. Mm. Yeah, All right. I don't know. I, I think... agree, Jacob. What do you think? Uh, so, so I love volume, and Shark is definitely the number one there. It's just he's been hurt. He's been dinged up. Like he's it's it's just been a really weird year for Shark. Yeah. I had high hopes for him this season. I did um, too. Yeah. So it's so yeah. It's maddening that uh, that he's just been in and out. He's been inconsistent, and the quarterback. I don't know the quarterback situation in Jack, you know, in Jacksonville. It just really seems like they're really trying for Trevor Lawrence. They're like Jake Luton, Luton. I don't, I don't know his name. Yeah. He, yeah. He's actually showing a little bit of promise. Let's go with Mike Glennon. Uh, let's keep Minshew out. Let's get the yeah. highest picks so we can get Trevor Lawrence. Like I really am behind that conspiracy that the Jags are really trying to one up the Jets here. So they're <laughs> trying their hardest to get shark Did out. Hire Bill <laughs> O'Brien lately. Yeah. I'm not- <laughs> Here's yeah. what we're going to do, guys. We're going to tank everything. We're going to get Trevor Lawrence, and then we're going to trade him immediately for DeAndre Hopkins. <laughs> for DeAndre Hopkins, or like someone <laughs> in their 30s. Yeah, uh, my goodness. Yeah, so Shark, <laughs> um, I don't blame you for that cut. I would still hold on to him just to see if he and Glennon have some sort of chemistry this week. I wouldn't start him, like you said, but just to see if they have some sort of chemistry. But, uh, yeah, I don't yeah, blame honestly, you. honestly, like him and Gaudi, I wrote them on there, and I both – I had question marks both next to both. They're like, they're kind of your bold picks. I think maybe shallower league drops uh, type of things. Like you can't drop shark if you're picking up like a, uh, even like a kooky kooky. Like I don't care at that point, you know, like, but if you can go out and pick up, like, honestly, I would swap out Galladay for Tim Patrick in a heartbeat at this point. Mm. Mm. Because who cares? Galladay is hurt. He's still hurt. He still hasn't practiced. This week, so it's not Let someone happening. else have him on their bench and waste away with him. I know, know right? Exactly. So like, have fun. Like, I've yeah. bitten it in multiple leagues. So yeah, that that's kind of where I was going with those. Gotcha. All um, right. And Sharks so kind of right there too. Next guys, we got here. Um, we already kind of talked about Daryl Henderson. Obviously, he's losing touches yep. touches to Acres. Mm-hmm. Um, Judy talked about Tim Patrick as well. Um, yes, I know. Um, Leonard Fournette. I mean, it's hard to trust Arians. I, I mean, I, who knows? I, but he said he wants to give Rojo 20 touches a game. Uh, okay. <laughs> that's uh, that's great for the Rojo sure, fans. Sure, yeah. <laughs> for Presto, you're welcome. <laughs> Next game's Leonard um, Fournette. No, right. I mean, who knows? Uh, yeah, I, well, Probably. that's what it's going to be. It's going to be this week. <laughs> right. Well, well, not this week, obviously, but next week. Boom. All right. Fournette's going to blow up, and right. you know Rojo's going to have four touches. Uh, they're going to figure it out on the bye week. Thanks for nothing during the season. Um, Jared Cook is the next one, He's obviously, garbage. with Drew Brees out. That didn't matter. <laughs> Before that, yeah, it wasn't good. Uh, yeah. yeah, I mean, it's, it's been bad for a while. It's a good call. He's, he's had some some up and down. But uh, 
Marquise Brown, Hollywood. I mean, except for that one big ass play against Pittsburgh, dude was absent the entire game, and that was with uh, not RG three. That was with uh, Todd McSorley. <laughs> right. Yeah. So <laughs> go Penn State. <laughs> yes. <Yeah. I'm> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> got a little Penn State love for my wife, you know. She she she's a fan. Nittany, I can Nittany. dig it. I dig it. <laughs> okay, Darius Slayton, dude, where were you last week? Huh? Killed me. Where have you been you for a while. And killed me. Yeah. Why? Why are you doing this to me? Daniel I have a Jones jersey yeah. that's signed by you. I mean, I don't even know if I want to give it away at this point. I don't think anybody wants it. And and <laughs> and Jacob Carson said it. Wentz. Daniel oh, Jones is sir. out, so that really yeah. kills Slayton's, Slayton's value. Absolutely. Yeah. Daniel that hamstring does not look pretty. pretty. We'll, we'll come back to you, yeah. Wentz. Worth a <laughs> sack of crap. Will uh, we come back to him? Will we? Yeah, let's just <laughs> forget about him. <laughs> That's it. Yeah, We're in uh, 2027. <laughs> if it had um, been for a Hail Mary, he would have been terrible this past week. Absolutely. Like, that saved his week. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I turned it off before that. And then my Did wife's like, too? oh, hey, they, they actually made a game out of it. They almost came back. I was like, what? No, no. <laughs> no, they didn't. There was Wait, 10 seconds. The Eagles? Are you, are you, are you... <laughs> Practice? Yeah. <laughs> Playoffs. Uh, I mean, hey, come I... on. Uh, yeah, no. I, I don't I don't care. It's, it's terrible there. Um, but yeah, Slayton was an absolute zero last week. He's been pretty much garbage this entire year. So, uh, Zach Moss, Devin Singletary. <sighs> it's risky. I mean, it's you never know which one's going to get what. Um, I still feel like Moss is more of the red zone guy. Uh, but do you want to risk that for he got, playoffs? He got outperformed by, like, and lapped by Devin Singletary last week. Yeah, I felt like like it, right. it like and, and like I was with you. I was with a lot of people last week before that that game at least, where it seemed like Moss was starting to become the guy. Right, and then it was just like, nope, just kidding. Yeah, like, we're oh, gonna, we're wait gonna, a minute. Psych, on. you know, Singletary, you get you get the most carries you've had all season. Yeah, you know, right. You like, know. really? <laughs> Hold up. Uh, so I, you know, I definitely threw in Moss as one of my waiver drops this week. I was like, I don't really care. So yeah. <laughs> And Some then, of these are personal, uh, guys. So I'm just gonna lie. I'm not gonna lie to you. These are personal. I get it. <laughs> Travis Fulgham. Oh, you stole mine uh, again. Uh, uh, Wentz. Sorry, we didn't go to you first. I, I meant to do that. No, so. no, please. <laughs> yeah, I just totally forgot. I, I I literally saw the uh, the Scott Fish question on Twitter about how confident are you that the Steelers Ravens game is actually going to happen. Uh, I think it was happened on Tuesday or whatever. And it, this was like three, four days ago, I guess. And I was like, well, I'm more confident that that game's going to happen than Travis Fulgham scores the 49 some odd points that I need to win. So, <laughs> yeah, we'll go with that. Yeah. Dude's been absolutely absent. Um, and, you know, and he was he was this year's Greg Ward or, you the know, volume has whoever. still been there for him. He just isn't catching the ball. Right. It's, Strange. And that's Wentz, dude. That is Wentz. It's that's not all not Wentz. All of it. That, I guarantee you, that is not. I've watched the, some of the games. That is not all of them are on Wentz. Not He's all. Of them, not no. coming down with the ball in some mm. cases. Yeah. Mm. No, but I mean, Wentz it, has not been good this year. I mean, it's, he's why, good, it's why he's on my list. Like, it's I'm just a good ninety ten for Wentz. So, um, no, I'm just kidding. It's probably worse than that. <laughs> <laughs> all right. The last guy we had here was Lev Bell. Who cares? Uh, yeah. I mean, done, done he's trying not really doing much, you know, and he's probably going to be, you know, this year's uh, Damian Williams and just carry through the playoffs and win people leagues. So, uh, sure, go ahead and drop him. <laughs> I, I can't. You can't start Seriously. him anymore. I feel like he can't even try. I mean, you're really hoping for a, a Clyde Edwards Hilaire. Injury for with with Love Bell, but even right. then, like yeah, Evers Hilaire isn't doing anything either. So like, doesn't matter. I don't mm-hmm. know. Anyway, Jacob, you got any? You got any extra? Sorry, we meant to go to you first. I totally botched that one. No. Um. So 
before I go a little bit more into Travis Fulgham, which he was like my number sure. one, I was like, what? Yeah. 64%. Um, I'm going to get a few out of the way without much much to back it up, but I don't know why Mixon still still owned. I don't think he comes back this year, especially with Burrow out. There's no reason why they my, him. So my guess would be those are teams that have IR spots. And I know in a lot okay. of leagues that I play in, we everybody okay. increased the IR spots with COVID. So like... Okay. You know, and if he does, if he does come back in week 15, okay. you know, like you're just hoping he can be anything at this point because people sure. are dying at running back. So sure. okay. that's my guess. That's why I didn't throw him on here. I saw him high end too, but that's that's why I didn't do it. I personally just think that they just paid him and it's like, we're not going to risk further injury on because Probably we're going to get blown out yeah. all here. So, but I, I, I agree. But with an IR spot, sure. You know, yeah. that's fine. I'll stash him. That, um, hurt. that hurt me. Yes. But one guy that shouldn't be owned right now is C.D. Lamb. As great as he was with Dak Prescott, he's nothing with Dalton. I just I I don't see any. Okay, so like there's upside, of course. He has, he's a talent, but he's eight. He's eighty two percent owned. I mean, is anyone starting him? Like like you said, Joe. It's like, am I going to trust him in the playoffs? Probably not. So I'm probably going to stash a running back or a defense for the future. I don't know. What do you think, Joe? You kind of have a face. Uh, I've uh, I do have Lamb in one league. I am gonna make the right. playoffs in. Um, now, granted, it's a ten team league, but we added like it's it's a ten team league, but they it's it's like an eighteen roster spot league. So it's so that's a lot of roster. Still oh, okay. large enough. There's you know, a it's lot of like almost more than a, right. It's more it's more than a twelve team league even most of the time. Right. Uh, so to me, like I still think he's talented enough that like. I think, like, I, I, you're right. I'm not starting him. I've had him right. on my bench for a while. Um, but if I get hammered by wide receiver injuries, I've looked at the waiver wire in that league, and I'm like, I don't think I want to start anybody else over Lamb. Because sure. there's that potential of a home run yeah. with him. And so, like, my team is good enough where my floor with everybody else is good. And so, like, if I can get that home run with Lamb, and he's done it a couple of times with Dalton already, so like, who's to say it's not going to happen again? Sure. You know? sure. Um, so get some NFC East teams. I guarantee it. So <laughs> there you point. go. <laughs> I feel you there. I feel you there. That that's where I'm like I'm not totally like jumping ship with him. Okay. Okay. To where like well, the rest of these guys, they've been absolutely nothing. For a while, right? You no, know, Cooks, Judy. As much as we want to think he's going to be good, it's not I'm happening sure. this year, unfortunately. Marquise Brown, that shit's been gone for weeks, guys. It's done. He's not happening this year. Yeah, but uh, he gone. he gets one play every six games. Good <laughs> luck figuring that one out. Right. <laughs> you know, right. So, well, right, man, just- let's. Rip through some injuries, AJ. Uh, Jacob, we'll, we'll we'll stop and ask you, you know, a couple of these uh, just to get your take on them. But obviously, the the ones we know are out. Obviously, Chris McC- Christian McCaffrey with the shoulder. Um, QBs. We got a lot all of a sudden. The last couple of weeks here. Uh, so we've got uh, Kyler Murray with the shoulder. He was limited, although as I mentioned, he was taken off the injury report. I saw that flash through just before the show started. So hopefully that's a good sign there because I know I need him in one league. I got I need him to get into the playoffs. Uh, Daniel Jones hamstring did not practice. So let's be honest, this one's not happening. I don't think yeah. like he should be on the no. out list. I, I just out. don't understand how he's not already I, ruled yeah. out. Uh, but he's yeah. but he's not ruled out. He so I is in everybody's mind who owns right? him. I mean, he's except right. for the Giants. The, the you know we're gonna make it work. Staff came out and said you know it wasn't good. So. Uh, Nick Foles, questionable with a hip. <sighs> He's a limited. Mitch Trubisky's already been named as a starter, so it doesn't right. really matter at this point. Uh, <clears throat> Tua, I got to try after this, after a beer and a half of uh, <laughs> a <laughs> thumb injury. Tag of Viola. Tongue of Viola. <laughs> I can drink after that one. Uh, thumb <laughs> injury, limited. They're really kind of. Um, <clears throat> They're, they're really they're really not pushing him it feels like um you know he they're wrapping his hand up they're and, and even two has come out and been like you know I'm, I'm not totally sure so it really sounds like fitz is going to be back in this lineup again yeah. and, and i gotta ask you jacob like if fitz is in like 
mean, you do rankings just like I do. I mean, mm-hmm. how much does this help Parker? Oh, my gosh. It is <laughs> night and day for me. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He jumped like 10 to 15 spots, I feel like. That's and the perfect so number. Seki. Yeah, yeah, because I have um, I have Parker I to right now, I think, at like 18 range. But <laughs> if Tua were to come in, he'd be somewhere in the 30s. Like yeah. I don't trust Tua with the wide receivers yet, like well, at all. I just don't think they like the the coaching staff trust Tua right. to fling it around as much as they do Fitz. And Fitz right. is just a gunslinger, so like he's just gonna check right. it out. He's like Parker's like a sliver of it. Yeah, let's try it. <laughs> you know? Yeah, right, right, right. So, like, yeah. Yeah. I think it's good. I can make this. <laughs> all right. I mean, he's all I passed like a second in the end zone last week. Yeah, gets like got two passes for like thirteen yards. That touchdown was it was a great ball it was like oh, yeah. way up high like in the corner like only great. place it was the only person who's going to get it was Gasecki. And, and Tua can't that make was, that throw yet not yet it, this Ryan, is not there Ryan so. Fitzpatrick's you know, completion percentage is literally the sex panther of the NFL 60 percent of the time I'll be honest with you that, every goddamn time great line. I'll be honest with you that smells like pure gasoline <laughs> Well, let's light that fire because <laughs> Fitzpatrick is oh, going out in a ring of glory of flames. Yes. Oh. I love I love it. I love Fitz. He, is he would carry a lot of teams possibly to my favorite player in the NFL. Because not only is he just degaff, you know, when he goes out there, he's just, he's awesome. His beard is amazing. Mm-hmm. You know, his his intelligence is beyond anybody's in the NFL. And I mean that from Harvard. like an, an IQ standpoint for right. football. And yeah, and Harvard. I mean, the dude is a smart guy. Mm-hmm. He knows what's up. All right. Yeah. Don't disagree here. <laughs> um, I, lo- I love the uh, you better not the, the anchor man <laughs> quotes here. Well, uh, <laughs> Philip Rivers, though, as much as we like him, we do have to be a little worried. He had that toe injury. Mm. Um, he did sit out a few a few plays last week. Came back in, but he was pretty hobbled. Um, came through, but the toe injury did not practice so far this week. Then Lamar, um, I just read that you know, of course, we all know he got put on the COVID list. They're still saying he might not get cleared for Tuesday. Really. It's just pretty shocking. I kind of thought he might. Um, I, I don't know. I just I just read that Harbaugh came out and said that he might not get clear for Tuesday. So that is definitely something to watch. And then obviously, if that happens, the entire offense gets downgraded. Yeah. Not that you were trusting many of them anyway, unfortunately. <laughs> ah, um, you're going to come on down to McSorley's. We're going to have a real good time. We'll get some uh, bangers and mash and throw some balls around. Yeah. Going deep. <laughs> going deep what? to Hollywood. <laughs> Touchdown. Brilliant. Nice. <laughs> McSorley uh, kind of had that like IDGAF, you know, like I get, you know, like, right? Like, this is my only chance. I yeah, got to say, like, hey, what? yeah, he's you know, wait, what? I'm not going to lie. Like, you want me he to go was in? Phenomenal okay. in the preseason in 2019. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I get it. He was playing against third stringers, but he was, he was on fire. He still produced. Yeah. 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 And he didn't do bad this past week. I mean, that's, yeah, I agree. Know, or yesterday. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Feels weird <laughs> this to say week. That. So does Marquise Brown kind of receive a little bit of an upgrade if he starts? I don't know. Honestly, Maybe. if he if, if McSorley starts, I might bump Brown up a bit because sure. McSorley's going to pass the ball a little more than right. Lamar. Like they can't, you know, they don't have that pat, run pass option as much. With now, he can run. Yeah, yeah I watch yeah. a lot. Of yeah, he, he did in college. Life. He was he does run, team. but he's nothing like Lamar, and he's nothing even like RG three. Let's be honest. Sure. Even at thirty years old, he's nothing like RG three. Um, so they're they're gonna they're gonna drop back and pass a lot more with him. Probably also because he's probably a better passer. Probably <laughs> to be honest, like, right? Let's be real. Like he just might be. So mm-hmm. all right, okay. let's move on to running backs here. Todd Gurley questionable with a knee uh, downgraded to did not practice unfortunately. So that's not looking good. No Hopefully it's just a maintenance day. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Philip right. Lindsay yeah. questionable with a knee limited. Uh, and then obviously Swift concussion. Um, <clears throat> You know, I, I wrote down initially right before, you know, I saw the other news that we've already talked about. You know, I wrote down he didn't practice, but it was due to illness. But honestly, that illness could be that he's still just feeling mm. symptoms, Maybe. Um, even though he was cleared. So it, it seems weird. Uh, mm. Josh Jacobs, this is probably the biggest one of all, really. Uh, 
ankle did not practice. So he's yeah. still kind of lingering here. Like, uh, yeah, I've gotten a few questions being like, do, do I spend my number one waiver on Booker? I was like, if you have to win this week, yes. You know, like <laughs> if Jacob misses, then he's, he's an RB one too. Yeah, it's uh, it's definitely one of those. You, you've got to, you just got to go for broke, and they're playing the Jets, so right. it's gonna right. be good. Right. Uh, and exactly. Broker's been pretty good when given given touches, mm-hmm. so I I don't, I don't hate that. Um, <clears throat> let's see here, uh, Salvan Ahmed uh, shoulder limited. It sounds like he's on his way back. Dalvin Cook ankle limited. It sounds like they're just kind of protecting him. I mean. Still, though, yeah. as we said, any given day, he's out. So, uh, and then Clyde Edwards, Elair or Helair, I don't know, whoever, depending on which uh, broadcast Ed you listen Hare. to. I know, who knows? <laughs> uh, Eclair. Illness did not practice to say yeah. it's not COVID related. Chocolate Eclair this... scores yeah. a touchdown. <laughs> while Yummy. Love Bell is pissed off. <laughs> and then uh, David Johnson, yeah. concussion, full practice. So there you go, AJ. Yeah, yeah, he's um, in. Uh, right. I'm gonna so do I this one. over a few hey, of the notes. I'm gonna Give me a goddamn one. break. I'm gonna do no, this man, one real good. quick, AJ, just because uh, I know you might skip over it because it's not usually there. But we got a kicker injury, and it's Young Hoku. And I only uh, say this so because it's the number one fantasy kicker, right? Young Hoku. Hey. No, you, uh, no way. No <laughs> way. Nice. Uh, <laughs> questionable with a quad. <laughs> now he did come back to practice in full. But uh, it's something to look out for. Like, you know, it's kickers, you know, they could re-pull it real quick in practice. So you got to be looking out for that. And I know a lot of people who are in contention are own, or have him on their roster. I mean, he's like 12 to 15 points a week. Easy. Yeah, um, right. So that's a big one there. So, AJ. I'm pretty sure Ku has <clears throat> like 8,000 times more points in fantasy than uh, Mike Hilton does at quarterback. So, or Hinton, sorry. Kendall Hinton, yeah. Okay. Kendall. Yeah, for sure. Well, um, it is an I don't infinite know. amount number of points it's more. a lot. Literally. A lot. A large what margin. Did Kendall Hinton get, like, negative? Negative. Two? I don't know. It was negative in every league that I owned him in, and it was yeah terrible. <laughs> it hurt. Dude, you sat, you put him in for a Allen Robinson. That's Whoa. your own. AJ, <laughs> he was really going for that ceiling. You literally so, lost oh, because you put hit me for Robinson. And I we just talked is, about Allen Robinson sucking last week the on show. the show, so I don't want to hear it. It doesn't matter. You don't put I'm him sorry in that I took your sage advice, number four. Ooh. I'll be sure to not do that anymore. All right, let's get <laughs> to the receivers. Julio, questionable handspring. He's Hand out. Spring. He is out. Calvin Ridley. Well, that sucks. Questionable foot ankle. Uh, he was limited. Jerry Judy, who we talked about already, is questionable with an ankle. He was limited. Kenny Gala, bye bye, did not practice. Hip injury. See ya. Alan Lazard, questionable with a core, limited. DJ Chark, limited with ribs. Dude, stop, stop going to you know the uh, A1 Steakhouse. Come on. <laughs> we need you to play. We need you to focus on Glennon. Nice. Stop dealing with the ribs. No more ribs. Nelson Aguilator Oops. arms, um, ankle DNP. Sterling Shepard toe, shoulder limited. True story. I have a neighbor, former neighbor, friend of mine, sledding down the common area, and he hit his shoulder and somehow broke his leg. That I don't understand still to this day. See, I don't even Christmas. want to think about it. Go wow. after yourself. Christmas. All right. <laughs> Just Terry, <laughs> Terry Slayton. Shoulder foot limited. Uh, Brashard Perryman. Shoulder limited. Uh, AJ Brown. Love the name. Hip did not practice. Tight ends. Hayden Hurst. Questionable. DMP. He was limited uh, yesterday, though, so we'll see what happens. He's looking on the upside of down. Irv Smith. Groin. DNP. Zach Ertz, ankle limited, also has Wentz as a quarterback. Jonu Smith, knee, DNP, and uh, kickers. Yes, really kickers. Young, I, I never mind, we already did that. <laughs> All right, week 13 picks. I know. Young, wait. <laughs> Go, 
Sleepers. All right. You got to take them. Sleepers. Top. Uh, yeah. So, within so the, just to, the top just to let, sorry, I got to cut you off, AJ, real quick. Um, just to let everybody know who's listening and might not know, our sleepers come from the Fantasy Pros ECR, current ECR rankings at the time of whenever the hell we actually looked at them, which might have been earlier today. Um, anybody outside the top 15 for quarterbacks? Mm. Yes. So, so I went with Philip Rivers, as we've already talked about him. He, like you said earlier, Joe, he's been so over the past three games, he's quietly thrown the fifth most passing yards in the NFL with 287.5. That's a that's a solid floor. And he's also thrown six touchdowns over that span. So this week he goes up against the Houston Texans defense, who's not that great. So I expect him to have to throw a lot because Deshaun Watson's been coming on as of late. Even though he lost Fuller, I still expect him to be competitive, you know, with David Johnson coming back. And Brandon Cooks is still a viable wideout for him. And like you said, Aikens could step up. Like, he's still going to make this a competitive game. And he's at home. If if So if Rivers was... Um, so Watson's at home. I'm saying like Watson's going to make this a competitive game, which is going to make Rivers throw a ton. I always love quarterbacks that are looking at either a negative game script or they're looking at a competitive game. Mm-hmm. Rivers, right, right. And Rivers is your guy this week, um, in my opinion. And I have Carr way down the list, not just because he stunk last week, but it's because <laughs> he's facing the Jets. And they could be blowing out the Jets by the third quarter. Um, so I, I would rather trust rivers over a car. I know that's not the question, but rivers is my sleeper yeah. this week. I'll say this with about the, you know, the car way down your list. Like I'm, I'm lower on him than others this week. I, 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 I told Dave Eddie on, on Sunday when, when I looked back at my rankings, I was pissed at myself because I didn't like car, but I got, you know, I, I, I look at multiple rankings. I look at multiple projections. I also do my own, you know, gut feeling type of thing. And, right. you know, I, I got, I saw a ton of people were in on car because, yeah, he was playing the Falcons. And I was like, but God. And I picked him as my bus last week. Remember that, guys? Wow. And, and I went, man, he's so terrible <laughs> when he doesn't play the Chiefs, especially the week after the Chiefs. And I yeah. killed myself because I put him back up there. And, um, yeah, he, obviously killed everybody but uh i didn't think he'd be that bad but sure i you know i didn't think he'd be good either um look you just gotta be wary i drank the car kool-aid and i had him i think like top 12 i did too everybody got but you know what you i think that's what i hope everybody everybody got killed by that right right uh so nobody got hurt by it because everybody's on the same page so unfortunately like it's just one of those things like if you really look back at it though like he was outside the top 20 even 25 for quarterbacks every week he hasn't played the chiefs except for like one true and um yeah this week he gets another good matchup i will say that it's about like negative game scripts um sometimes it's because the quarterback goes off first True, true. And you know, and and with and with Jacobs hurt, maybe it could be Carr that blows up. So I'd be careful ranking him too low, especially if Jacobs is is banged up coming in questionable, things right. like that. Like I might boost him up just a little bit more than I usually would because of that. Okay. So, so I got Jared Goff three straight three hundred plus yard games before last week against San Fran. But he's only had four touchdowns in those four weeks to six interceptions. Not very great of a uh, you know ratio there. But he's got plenty of rebound opportunity against the weak Arizona D. So I like Jared Goff. Joe, who do you have? And <laughs> thirty words. We went, or less. we went a little long. Uh, mine's Trubisky and uh, Jeff. You're right there with me, man. I, I like it. Stella matchup this week. Got the Lions. They're falling apart. Fire their coaches. Um, Dick, Dick, Nick for life. You know, it's just I, like I, I'm gonna have a hard time starting him over more reliable options, more trustworthy sure. options. But um, I wouldn't be surprised if he falls inside the top twelve this week. Mm-hmm. So, uh, uh-huh. running backs, anybody outside of the top twenty four? Jacob, go. Miles Gaskin. I'm gonna say before he went down with the injury, he was averaging 19 touches per game. Now I don't think he's a lock to return this week, but I would keep a close eye on him because if he does go. 
I don't think that I think you said his name was Ahmed. I always thought it was Ahmed. Um, I, I've but, heard Ahmed a bunch. Okay, so that's so why I, I said that. <laughs> sure, sure. No, I have no I idea. I could be wrong. Um, I don't think that Ahmed steals enough work to make Gaskins not a viable RB two. I think that Gaskins going to go back to his fifteen to twenty touches and be a reliable RB two for you. Fair enough. I maybe. like it. I like it. Uh, I'm going with uh, Gio Bernard. I mean, mostly for his mustache because it's fantastic. Uh, <laughs> but yeah. he's been solid. I mean, oh, stats man. are stats, but stashes are stashes. So, stash is stash. <laughs> and we talk about, you know, keepers and stashes all the time. So with mixing out, he's been good. Um, you know, and he can be relied on this week a little bit in the short pass game, I feel like, because obviously Burrow is out. So. I like I like Gio. All right. Uh, mine is, uh, and I'm going back to the well again, James White. I mean, I come like, on, guys. I, like, I get it. Out. It's not sexy. No. He doesn't get a ton of, ton of targets, ton of volume. But he gets literally all the passing volume in that offense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and last week, it was like almost the opposite. It was weird. But he scored twice, so fine. It worked. Uh, right. <laughs> I'll take right. it. Uh, but yeah, no. Most weeks he's gonna get you know five six catches. He's gonna bust off a few. He's the Rex Burkhead. And how good was Rex Burkhead for a long time? He was good. I still yeah. think James White's better than Burkhead. Yeah, I don't know good. why Burkhead got the job over him. So yeah. whatever. All right, wide receiver. Anybody a sleeper? Anybody outside the top thirty six for on the ACR list? What you got? All right. So this is an unpopular opinion based on this show, but I'm gonna go with Jerry Judy. Uh, before yeah. last week's game, which we we're which we are already throwing away, he was enjoying a nice four game stretch where he was averaging ten targets for seventy six yards per game, and he he literally is open on every single play. It's just up to Locke to actually get him the ball, um, which he cannot. So, <laughs> so clearly, any of our Denver is you know, the one who like screwed Locke. up in the Trevor Lawrence uh, situation. I wish they had a bad enough record to be in that, Oof. but uh, they do not. Unfortunately, they like will find a up. way to make it work. Trade uh, up uh, and no, just keep LA Judy won't do that. only. Right. Uh, it, it'll be great. Elway has right. like, right, Elway like will not do it. <laughs> um, but I like I like Judy's game script. It's going to be a, a negative game script. They're going to get blown out, but Judy's going to get ten to fifteen targets, which is going to equate to probably eight catches for seventy to eighty yards and hopefully a score. Probably not, but I mean, in a PPR league. You can do much worse. I think he falls into that top 25, top 30 range. I like it. I like it. I'm going with uh, going down to McSorley's again. Going to, you know, Hollywood and Vine. Okay. Hollywood Brown, dude. I mean, that that was like the play that you drafted Hollywood for. And it wasn't from Lamar. It was yeah. from Trace McSorley. So, you know. Yeah, if you're looking for the big play game, okay, great. You know, Lamar's out. It might actually benefit you uh, with McSorley starting because RIP RG3. Sorry, bro. Bye season. Yeah, I mean, yeah. Is he still your sleeper if uh, if Lamar starts? If Lamar starts, Dallas is a bad defense. Yeah, because Dallas sucks. Yeah, that that's that's what I was thinking. I mean, when we were talking yeah. about him being a drop, I was like, yeah, but he's got Dallas this week. I mean, come on. Yeah. Um, I drop him after this week, but that's fair. All yeah. right, who you got, Joe? Uh, mine's Gabriel Davis. Uh, super deep down the list, man. But uh, he's been <laughs> really good with uh, yeah. with with John Brown out, and John Brown's obviously on the IR, so he's gonna be out again. Um. So, you know, just real quick here, Gabriel Davis is, is a guy, especially in DFS, you don't want to pass up. Mm. I like it. I All like right, it. Let's especially move on to the bus. He's throwing him touchdowns then. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Let's move on to our bus here. So our bus quarterbacks. Anybody inside the top 12 for quarterbacks? This one was super tough for me. I like all the quarterbacks currently ranked inside yeah, the top hard. 12. <laughs> I get yeah, it. yeah, like that like almost mirrored mine, but I just had a few players ranked, you know, like differently. Mm-hmm. Um, one quarterback that I believe is ranked a little too high is Deshaun Watson. Like I said earlier, I don't necessarily think that he'll bust, 
but a top 10 finish will be tough. Um, I have him ranked as eight. I think the ECR is at five. I think that's a very, is very high for him. Yeah, that's really lofty. Even if Fuller was there, that'd be like, I don't know, he's facing the Colts, and the Colts have one of the best pass defenses in the league. They're only allowing 209 yep. yards per game, you know, like um, through the air. So I think it's going to be tough sledding for Watson this week. I think he finishes outside the top 10 uh, for sure. Yeah. All right. I like, uh, I like Tannehill as my bust. I mean, mm. again, it was kind of a, it was a tough, uh, tough choice here yeah. throughout, but you know, Smith and uh, AJ Brown are both injured right now, you know, so hopefully they end up playing to help his cause. But if they don't, or if they're limited in any fashion, you know, he's relying on Corey Davis um, and a bunch of no-name receivers, you know, and it's not really an easy game for Derrick Henry either, even though he's basically matchup proof. But Cleveland's got a pretty pretty tough D, so I'm just going to go with uh, Tannehill this week. Yeah, my mine was Watson, so I'm, I'm mm. right there. I'm right there nice. with you, man. Nice. All right, uh, so we, got just, for both. we just keep going. Running back. All right. All right, so uh, running back. Um, I'm going to go with yeah, Wayne Gallman. the top 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with Wayne Gallman. Um, you know, even though he is he is receiving the bulk of the volume and stuff, which I love, um, I think he he's right outside the RB2. I think he's going to be more of a flex play this week just because, you know, the Seahawks, they'll probably stack the box with Daniel Jones out. You know, like there will be really no threat of passing, which it's like it's the Wayne Gallman show. And Wayne Gallman's talent isn't isn't good enough to surpass, you know, extra attention. So I don't think that Gallman's really an RB2 play. I think he's more of a flex. I think he falls out of that RB2 range. Um, I don't think he necessarily like busts busts to where he gets like 30 yards. But I do think he gets maybe in the range of about like 60 yards total. The fact that we're talking about 20 or lower in 2020 and the name that is mentioned is Wayne Gallman. No kidding. Is totally 2020. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I like the call, though. I like the call. Thanks, man. <laughs> I'm, going, uh, I'm going Antonio Gibson. Okay. I mean, you know, Pittsburgh is as stingy D as it is. Uh, they're undefeated. They're the only undefeated team left, and they may finish the season undefeated. They've got a tough road ahead, but it's still doable. It's a good team. But the fact that they lost uh, Bud Dupree to the ACL yeah, injury, brutal. they did. That I didn't even yeah, hurts. that's out. Yeah, yeah that's done. You know, we don't we don't typically dip into defense for the injury, so I saw we didn't have it up there. I figured that's I would just mention though, it here. We didn't have Bob, Bob IDP man on. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it was, uh, not good, one. not good. And it wasn't, I mean, that play, I don't, I don't know if you saw the play obviously, but it's, I mean, he kind of just passed his guy and then just came up lame and Wrong. just fell over. It's like, that's oh, that's not good. Hmm. Yeah. Dupree's been awesome for them this year. So, awesome. I mean, that, that helps Gibson a little bit, but Pittsburgh's D is still yeah, top so notch. So. Sure. I'm just going, going with Gibson. It's gonna be yeah off the Mister Checkdown there. Um, so right, all right. Mine is gonna be, dude. I'm going Alvin Kamara. Yeah. Dang. I so mean, that's who I that's who I would have gone man, if like, you didn't write it down. I don't blame you. I mean, with with Hill, like he's seen the carries. But here's the thing with the defensive with Taysom Hill back there. They're stacking the box. They know Taysom Hill doesn't pass it deep. They, they the passing threat isn't there. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, the first game he threw for like what a hundred and fifty yards or whatever it was. Yeah, and then threw for another fifty or something like that. Last week he threw for eighty four. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Kamara saw eleven and thirteen carries in those games. But guess how many targets he saw? I know. He saw two total. Three. Oh, oh, three. Three, three yeah. total targets, and he's caught one. For negative two yards. <laughs> Dude, I'm sorry. Like, if Kamara's not getting the passing work and they're stacking the box against him, Kamara's not getting the job done. 
Like I'm probably not sitting Kamara because you just feel foolish when you lose Mm -hmm. sitting Kamara. But if I, you know, if I have a very, very, very good team and they're, they're out there, man, they're, they're out there. These got good teams where you've got guys getting you 10 to 12 points consistently. I think about it. I really would like, it's hard Mm -hmm. to, I've got him outside my top 10. I'm not going to lie. He's not in there. Mm -hmm. Um, so Kamara is not not looking good. Uh receiver yeah. out inside the top 24. Jacob. Yeah, so I'm going to go with DeAndre Hopkins. I I don't think he produces uh I don't think he produces wide receiver one numbers this week. You know, he's like we already said he's he's going up against Jalen Ramsey and that's a very difficult matchup. Yeah. Hopkins Unless is talented. DK Metcalf. <laughs> right. Right, right. DK Metcalf. Yeah. <laughs> right, then you are just untouchable. You are just matchup proof. Um, right, <laughs> but Hopkins is talented enough to still pull off a uh, pull off a valuable stat line. I can see six catches for seventy yards. Um, I just don't see him finding the end zone. I don't see Jalen Ramsey allowing him to do much. And I think that Kyler forces a few to him, which might get Kyler picked off once or twice. Um, he's more of a wide receiver two than a wide receiver one play for me this week. AJ, <laughs> sorry, sorry. You want me to go? Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good. Um, that was that was actually where I was thinking of going, um, but I'm gonna go with uh, both both Steelers uh, receivers here and Deontay Johnson and um, Chase Claypool. I mean, look, I, yeah, I don't like Gibson for the reason because of Pitt. But I also don't like these guys for the reason because of Washington. I mean, they're very stout against wide receivers this season. And uh, I just think it's going to be this could be a very low scoring game and very defensive minded game. I could see like a, you know, 17 to 13, 17, 14 type matchup here. Um, So I'm going to go with those guys. Uh, Yeah, I no, I, I don't. <laughs> I honestly don't agree with it. So um, I just I, I cannot get on board with with anybody against Washington. I know their defense has been all right, but I still think Deontay and Claypool will be all right. So I'm not sitting those guys. My my bus, though, is, is Lockett. And like, I get it, man. It's, it's it's Lockett. But you look at his game log, man. He's been boom and bust and way more bust than boom. Um, wide receiver 58, 64, 67. This is the last five games, by the way. So other finishes, 32 and 11. So really, he's only been good in one week. The 32, all right, it didn't kill you. The other ones, like, what the hell? Like, he, yeah. it, Russ has been just chalking it to DK, mm-hmm. and like, and you can tell, like, it's just, I don't know if Locke is hurt. I know he got the, you know, I think there was like an ankle injury or something yeah. early on, you know, a few weeks ago. Maybe that's really still bothering him, and that's what happened last year, right? You know, he got that injury, and it's, he tried to play through it, and it just doesn't work for him. He needs to sit out and be fully healthy for him to work because he's like a speed guy, short yardage, you know, run after catch type of guy. Um, mm-hmm. So if I, I just. I'm honestly considering the, the in the in the league I have Lockett. I'm actually considering sitting him this week. Um, I can't think of for who right now, but um, he's just a guy who I, I just it's hard to trust because he's not giving me a whole lot. I respect that call. It's it's hard to trust him, but it's hard to get him out of my top fifteen. Like I think he's at fourteen for me, but it's it like, is my goodness because the offense is so good. Right, 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 and he can go off for three touchdowns at any given moment. But like you said. He's also a bus guy too. He's a boomer bus guy, which is really hard to trust in the playoffs, like you said. So, and I usually don't draft those kind of guys. Right. So Lockett, I didn't think was that type of guy, and he hasn't been in his career except for when right. he's been injured. Mm-hmm. And so I took him, knowing and because he was actually a value this year, mm-hmm. and so I took him at a value, and thought I'd be good. And then he got hurt, and I just think DK's really stepped up and kind of ruined his value as well. So it's been right. tough. All right, tight end streamers. Let's finish things out here real quick. Um, we use Yahoo ownership percentages again. Anybody 60% or less owned in Yahoo? Jacob, go. So I'm going with Jordan Reed. I know he 
disappointed last week with only two catches for 18 yards, but that was a difficult matchup going, going up against the Rams. Um, I think that Reed should bounce back this week going up against a Buffalo Bills defense that's giving up the sixth most fantasy points to tight ends this season. Yeah, that's good. Uh, AJ? I'm going with Kyle Rudolph. Uh, we already talked about Kirk Cousins. Um, I mean, Rudolph had a, a huge game last week. Yeah, granted, Thielen was out um, and, and Irv Swift was out, but... You know, Smith's still dealing with the groin injury. Um, Thielen should be back. So I might cut into it a little bit, but uh, I just like the upside there. And and Cousins trusts the tight end. So Uh, I'm going with Zach Ertz. Uh, It's activated off the IR. And, you know, we know the Eagles will use their two tight ends. So I think, uh, you know, if we're going to have any hope in this Eagles offense, it's when both these tight ends are healthy. So I'm hoping Ertz can, can bring some life to this uh, defense nice. here. Uh, any, you know, 60% or less are owned in, in, in Yahoo as well. Jacob. Yeah. So I'm streaming the Raiders wherever I can. Um, yep. They have, they have a juicy matchup this week against a Sam Darnold led New York jets team that is giving up the most fantasy points to yeah. defenses this year. Um, you know, by no means are the Raiders an elite defense, but I'm streaming any defense going up against the Jets. <laughs> I don't blame you. Uh, yeah. And then AJ, I am going the opposite end of the <laughs> spectrum here, and I am going with the J-E-T-S, Whoa. Jets, Jets, Jets. Oh, really? Fuck yeah. Hell uh, no. Vegas? Have fun with that one. <laughs> Vegas, Vegas D has given up. Uh, let me see here if I can do math. Uh, let's 72 exclude. points over the last two weeks to Atlanta. Yeah, Kansas yeah, City. Okay, I get that. Last week, last week was weird. They don't, don't do right. anything. They don't do anything. The Jets D has put up uh, eight points and nine points, I believe, the last two weeks against. Um, their opponents, they've only given up 28 points, still a good amount of points, and then 20 points to Miami. The 28 was against the Chargers, but they have seven sacks. They have three fumbles recovered. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there. They score a touchdown this week um, on a pick six because they haven't had an interception since uh, week six, um, probably from Fitz. Thanks. So, <laughs> yeah, why not? Uh, nice. Nice. Derek right, Carr so, will throw one interception. It will be a pick six. Right. So at I am Bold. picking the Chicago Bears. I was actually surprised to see them under 60. Uh, facing the lowly Lions. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, big stretch, right? I mean, but like, OK, they're under 60. That's our sure. that's our cutoff. Yeah. yeah. Um, we, we raised it throughout the season because we were tired of picking teams like the Jets the every week and the, and the Jets every week. So. <laughs> No, <laughs> <laughs> the Falcons only against uh, AK forty-seven. Yeah. So, all right, man, Jacob. That's all we got for the show. Uh, we want to thank you for coming on. Uh, remind everybody where they can find you on Twitter and you know wherever else on the internet. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Ain't Done Yet, and Done is spelled D U N N E. I would love for you guys to follow me for my streamer articles and my rankings and. Uh, I just want to thank you guys for having me on. I had a blast talking fantasy with you, gentlemen. Absolutely. Always a pleasure. Wait, yeah, check uh, him out. He does some good work. Thank and you. Keep uh, up the rankings, buddy. Maybe we'll maybe do. next year we'll get him writing some football for us. I had no idea you were right. football until halfway hey, through the year this year. <laughs> I would love that. <laughs> right on. So, I'm it. Have a good night, and we will right. talk to you later. Uh, right. AJ, you got uh, anything else to add before we, before we close? I know... Uh, we got some basketball trades going on. I don't know if we want to talk about those. No. Nah, I don't either. Because freaking boys <laughs> are just stupid. Basketball, Christmas, uh, yeah. Oh shit. I totally botched my uh my whole my whole opening on um on the tight end streamers. I was gonna sing Rudolph the Red Nosed Reindeer to be a, a nice joke on on the fact that I hate Christmas. And we can allow you to botch that. Good night, everybody. Rudolph. Nope. Good night, everybody. Clear us out, Jeff. <laughs>
Cheers. I'm out. I'm out of beer. I need more. <laughs>